One of the things with chemists is that we must find out what's going at the atomic level. Now to find out what's going on at the atomic level, it takes a lot of kit, and it's kit like this that shows us where our atoms are. The first thing we have to do is grow a crystal. Now, that can be easy, it can be difficult, but they don't need to be very big. And as you can see here, I've got what we call a goniometer, a little glass fibre, and on the end of there that you can't actually see with the human eye is a little crystal. But the most important thing with that crystal is all the atoms are aligned in a regular fashion. They're not mixed together, they're all perfectly aligned. And we take our crystal here and we put it onto our machine. Now there's various bits with this machine that are very important. So obviously we have our crystal there. These tubes here, they fire x-rays and that's very important when we're doing our uh, analysis. Here we have a liquid nitrogen supply because we don't want our atoms moving about. We want them nice and steady. So we measure this at 150 Kelvin. That's really quite low to make sure our atoms are just nice and steady. Well of course we've got our x-rays, we've got our crystal. We want to see what that picture looks like. It's like a snapshot and where we have a camera. And what happens is we have our crystal, our x-ray beams come in and some of those x-rays are diffracted at different angles and this machine measures that diffraction. Now a machine like this is really quite state-of-the-art. With a machine like this we can find out the atomic level. That's very difficult to do. But with the right kit, with the right detectors, the right temperature, you can actually get a really good picture of the molecular structure. So this is the data we actually get out of all that experiment there, all those x-rays and the camera. And effectively our crystal is here. We can't see it because we don't want to see it, but you see these bright spots here. Your x-rays come in and then they're diffracted. And these little spots here is what's diffracted. And if we measure each of these spots and again backtrack, that's when we get our data out. That's when we get our structure out. So each snapshot, what we're doing, we're taking the crystal, we fire an x-ray beam, we measure the pattern, we twist the crystal a little, we fire the x-ray beam again, and we measure the pattern. And we keep doing that again and again. And in this set of data, we do that a thousand times. But eventually, once we collect all that data, we can then do this backtracking. We can see we've got two metal ions, in this case they're zinc. We've got a load of organic fragments, and they form this complex here. So that crystal, even though it's macroscopic if we like, we can see it in the real world, when we look down it's made up of lots and lots of these molecules. This is a powder diffractometer. Whereas that machine's a crystal diffractometer, this one analyzes powder. Now that's great because getting crystals is very difficult. That's the hard part. This machine, you don't need crystals. You don't get as much information as you do with a crystal machine, but it's easier to get the samples. You still get a lot of information, but not as much as that one. The University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.